In this video, I'm going to talk about Boolean algebra and logic gates and the relationship between the two. George Boole was an English mathematician and one of his mo one of the most famous things that he did was to formalize logic statements into a system that is that that was the prototype of what is today called Boolean algebra. In his own words, he said his purpose was to investigate the fundamental laws of the operations of the mind by which reasoning is performed, to give them in the symbolical language of a calculus, and upon this foundation to establish the science of logic and construct its method. Now within this method he did three important things. First, he used literals such as x, y, z, a, b, c to represent logical values. Second, he used signs for logical operations such as and and or. And thirdly, he used the identity or the equal sign to relate equivalent operations. It should be noted that what Boole developed was really a prototype of what we have as Boolean algebra today, but it really laid the groundwork for, for what we have. Claude Shannon was an American mathematician and electrical engineer, and in 1937 he published his master's thesis, which showed the relationship between Boolean algebra and electrical circuits. In his thesis, he was able to show that you could use Boolean algebra and binary arithmetic to simplify electrical circuits. And in this, in this particular case, the electrical circuits were used in telephone switching equipment. Boolean algebra is a subset of algebra that deals with values of true and false, or more commonly referred to as 1 and 0. There are a few basic operations in Boolean algebra, and I'm going to outline and describe some of them, and then show the associated logic gate that can implement that Boolean algebra function in logic or in digital circuitry. The first operation is called the AND operation. And the AND operation can be thought of as a Boolean algebra multiplication. And one way that it can be written out is like this. A gets ANDed with B to give the value of x. So A has a logical value of 1 and zero, one or 0, B has a logical value of 1 or 0. Combine them together through the AND operation that will give you a value of 1 or 0. And the relationship between the inputs and the output can be written as a truth table, which looks something like this. We've got a column for A, a column for B, and a column for x, the output. Now in Boolean algebra, of course, values can be true or false, or 1 and 0, or 0. So with two inputs to this AND operation, we can have four possible combinations of those inputs. Either A and B can both be 0, A could be 0 with B being 1, A could be 1 with B being 0, or A and B can both be 1. And the way that the AND operation works is that the output value x will only be a 1 if both A and B are, are 1s. The truth table looks like this at the output. Only when both inputs A and B are 1 is the output 1. Another way to think about this as, uh, is as a circuit. Now this is just, just a conceptual idea. This, these aren't really logic gates. But let's say we have a circuit with a battery. And we've got two switches here. And these switches are powering a light bulb. Yes, that's a light bulb. And each one of these switches is A. Well, one of the switches is A and the other switch is B. The only time the light bulb will turn on, if that light bulb's X, is if A is closed and B is closed, or A is on and B is on. Both A and B have to be on in order to complete the circuit and to turn on the light bulb X. This Boolean operation AND can be implemented in digital hardware or digital logic as the AND gate. And the AND gate the AND gate looks like this. We've got one input A, the other input B. Both of these inputs are going in to the AND gate. So this element right here is an AND gate. And you can see in some of my other videos how this logic gate, along with other logic gates, can be put together to build logic circuits. 
The second basic Boolean algebra operation is called the OR operation. And this is sort of a digital addition. The OR operation when written out in Boolean algebra form looks like this. A plus B or A or B equals Y. In the case of the OR operation, the output Y is a 1 if either A is a 1 or B is a 1 or both A and B are 1. So the truth table for the OR operation looks like this. You got an A input column, a B input column, and a Y output column. The four possible combinations of A and B, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Or Y is a 1 when either A is 1, B is 1, or both are 1. So if A and B are both 0, Y is a 0. If B is a 1, Y is a 1. If A is a 1, Y is a 1. And if A and B are both 1, then Y is also a 1. So a way to think about the OR operation is again to look at an electric circuit. So we have our battery here, and we've got again have two switches, the A switch and a B switch. But the two switches this time are connected in parallel to our light bulb and completing the circuit there. So this circuit is completed if A is a 1, we'll have a complete circuit. It's also completed if B is a 1, we'll have the complete circuit. And of course, it's also completed if both A and B are 1. That light bulb will be on in any of those three cases. The logic gate representation of the OR, of the OR operation, looks like this. We've got A and B inputs being applied to a gate that looks like this to give us Y. So there's the OR gate. Another operation is called the NOT, or the inverter. And the NOT operation, or the inverter operation, operates only on a single, on a single element. And the way that we write that out is A with a bar over it. So a bar over any variable indicates the NOT operation. So we have NOT A equals to Z. And what the NOT operation does is it inverts the value of A. So if A is a 0, it becomes a 1. If A is a 1, it becomes a 0. So here's our truth table for the inverter or for the NOT operation. A and Z here. With, with only one input, we can only have two possible in combinations of inputs. So if A is a 0, Z is a 1. If A is a 1, Z is a 0. In logic gate form, the NOT operation looks like this. Oftentimes, you'll just see the bubble to indicate the NOT operation. So the bubble might be on the input to one of the other gates that we've seen, the AND gate or the OR gate with a bubble on it, which means that that particular input is inverted. Similarly, you might see the bubble on the output of one of those gates. When, when you have the bubble on the output, that means the output of that gate is, is inverted. The XOR or exclusive OR operation is an interesting one, and it's actually the operation that George Boole referred to as the as the OR operation when he was first trying to develop his algebra of logic. And the XOR operation has the following truth table. If we have the input A and the input B in those columns and then the output here, W, the four possible combinations of inputs, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. The exclusive OR operation is only a 1 if one of the inputs is a 1, but not both. So it would be a 1 in this case, a 1 in this case, but not in the case where in both inputs are 0 and not in the case where both inputs are 1. The way the, the exclusive OR operation is drawn out in Boolean algebra form is the OR operator but with a circle around it. So it looks something like that. And then in gate form, it looks like the OR operator or the OR gate except We've got an extra little curved input there, curved section there for the inputs to connect to. So the input A comes into, into one input there, input B into the other wire here, through the XOR operator to give us W. Other commonly used Boolean algebra expressions and logic gates can be implemented with some combination of, of the previous ones that I've shown. So for example, the NAND gate. To give you an idea, what the NAND gate is, take a look first at the symbol for a NAND gate. So it looks like an AND gate, 
Let's say here's our inputs A and B, but the output gets inverted before you actually get the output. So, and the Boolean algebra expression looks like this. A gets anded with B and then inverted. The NOR gate is sort of like the NAND gate that we saw previously, except it's the OR gate with the output of the of the OR gate getting inverted to give us a NOR gate. We've got A and B gets passed through the NOR gate to give us a U. So the truth table for the NOR gate is the exact opposite of the truth table for the OR gate. There are A and B inputs, four possible combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 and the output U. The XNOR or exclusive NOR gate is the opposite of the exclusive OR gate. So I have here two other logic gates. You'll notice that we have an AND gate here but with both of its inputs inverted and an OR gate here but again with both of its inputs inverted. And these two gates are actually equivalent to ones that we've seen already. This AND gate with the inputs inverted is equivalent to the NOR gate. Which of course looks like this. And the OR gate here with its inputs inverted is equivalent to a NAND gate. So what I'd like you to try to do is draw the truth table, or starting with the truth table for the, take a look at the truth table for the OR gate and for the AND gate, a NAND gate, and see if you can come up with a truth table for both the, this gate, the AND gate with the two inputs inverted, and the OR gate with its two inputs inverted, and see if you can show yourself that these gates are equivalent. And finally, as a summary of everything that I've talked about, I've got a little chart here that shows all of the different, all of the different logic gates the truth tables, as well as the Boolean algebra expression representing the logic gate. One thing to note in this diagram is the NOT gate is actually a little bit different than what I showed you. I showed the bubble on the on this side. It really doesn't matter where that bubble is. That bubble itself is really what's doing the inversion, as you'll note on the negated AND gate or the negated OR gate or on the NAND gate or the NOR gate. That bubble is what indicates the NOT or the inversion operation. So I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.